finally, we get to transition pictures for Tammy Faye Messner, uh, otherwise known as Tammy Faye Baker. She died in 2007 of cancer, I think lung cancer and colon cancer when it happened. She'd been ill for about 11 years. And uh, I knew very little about this woman. She only ever appeared on British television when they were mocking her, mocking her appearance, mocking her histrionics, uh, mocking her endless repetition of the word God or Jesus or whatever. She ran the Praise the Lord ministry, the PTL ministry, with her husband Jim Baker and had her own little show on there called Tammy's House Party, which I had seen clips of in which she discussed subjects that were very often considered taboo by Christians, including homosexuality and drugs and so on. And uh, she proved to be incredibly sympathetic and empathetic. And she showed support for the gay community during the AIDS crisis of the 80s that the gay community never, ever forgot. And when PTL ministry collapsed, under accusations of fraud and conspiracy, and Jim Baker actually went to prayers for that. When that happened and her life was turned upside down, everybody deserted her, except for members of the gay community, because they never forgot that she'd stood up for them and showed real Christian values when they were in trouble. The last few years of her life were dogged by illness. It was a terrible time for her. Uh, she was having panic attacks. She'd come off the chemo in the end because there was no point in continuing. She had incurable lung cancer. And uh, I think the last appearance she did on Larry King on CNN, I think she was about 65 pounds. And it was a way for her to say goodbye to her fans. They saw her flaws, but they also saw an inherently good person who tried so hard to walk in Jesus' footsteps rather than, like so many Christians do, in Jesus' shadow. She volunteered to have these pictures done, as far as I can tell, because I wasn't really very interested in her, and yet she came forward and uh, kind of dominated my thoughts, and so I did them. And when I found her, she was in that kind of metaphorical cave I always see, but when I found her, she was pacing backwards and forwards, almost frenetically, like you would if you were, say, about to go on stage and you couldn't remember your lines. Oh, what am I going to do? How is this going to work? Oh, I can't remember anything. Backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And then she settled in and looked at the environment and thought, where's God? Where is heaven? This isn't what I was expecting. That's a common theme with uh, devout Christians. They've been told one thing and they get another and they can't marry the two. She looks around and she goes, I guess I'm just going to wait here until somebody comes to get me. Somebody will come, right? Nobody comes. Silence. She doesn't really walk. She kind of bustles over to the tunnel and looks up and goes, Hello? Anybody there? She is extremely confused. And she walks up the tunnel, sort of induced to go, pulled by a current that she can't see, but she feels like she has to go up there. And halfway up, she encountered the same kind of obstacle that Harriet Tubman encountered. A blockage. She could walk up either side, actually. But that's not what happened. She just went into the shadow area of this block and stood there. Somehow didn't feel like she could go forward. She wasn't ready. She was daunted. She was scared. Harriet Tubman, in her pictures, didn't feel worthy of meeting God as she perceived it. Tammy Faye 
didn't have that. This wasn't a fear of meeting God. This was a fear of being judged. There was real shame here. She didn't want God to see her in this state for her true self. And she put her head against this blockage, this wall, and wept. The evangelicals on television keep mentioning the word God and Jesus four times a sentence. It's an obsession. They just think that if they keep on mentioning Jesus, God, quoting from the Bible, then no matter what problems they have in life, they'll all go away. Jesus will forgive. God will forgive. And intellectually, that may be true. But when we get to this tunnel and we're about to go into the light and enter higher realms, an element of panic creeps in, apparently. If we have a lot of stuff that we are ashamed of or frightened of. She was scared of being judged. But as scared as she was, she couldn't stay there. And she knew it. If there's punishment, I have to take it. And eventually, she pulls herself together. She walks around and up the ramp. And continues. But it was like a perp walk for her. Like she had so much of a burden to carry. That God would not accept her. This God she talked about all her life. And the glory of God and uh, rejoice in God and praise God. Worship. That now she was here, all her sins would be exposed and she would not be accepted. She'd be cast into hell. Which of course doesn't exist. But uh, that was her worry. At the top of the tunnel is a chamber with a light in it, like a dome that I always see. It's symbolic. But she stood before it, trying to present herself as strong. But on the inside, she was terrified. And wouldn't step forward into it. She thought, if I don't go into it, I can't be condemned to hell. Or I can't be judged. Or nothing can happen to me if I just stand here. And in the end, a strange thing happened. It was almost like there were pulses, you know, invisible, noiseless pulses coming out of this symbolic dome, going past her and going through her. Boom, boom, boom. As if the universe was trying to disarm her or numb her. And I thought, I wonder if I can align with her consciousness and see what she's seeing. Why isn't she moving? And when I went in to look, almost like through her eyes, it was just solid white. There was no dome, there was no chamber, there was no nothing. It was just solid white. And it's like the universe had said, oh, this is just too much work. Come on in. And it enfolded her in its light. She was in it before she knew she was in it. It was everywhere, all around her, and had her stunned with its brightness and its benevolence and its forgiveness and its unconditional love. She had nothing to be scared of. That was all conscious mortal stuff. There's no hell. There's no punishment. There's no retribution. There's no reckoning. And she found that out now. And she sank into it with no more struggle. And was gone. And I think that religious people, particularly Christian religious people, 
live in fear a lot because they've been misled. They've been told that if they go to church, a particular building, if they worship God, if they sing hymns to God, if they say the name God all the time, God loves you, oh God forgive me, God this, or Jesus all the time, if they keep on doing that, somehow they're saved or they have an easy pass to heaven. But none of that is true. I mean, churches bring community and help people. Prayers are powerful. Hymns are fine. But there's no need to worship God because it's not a man in the sky. It's an infinite field of consciousness. You worship God by showing reverence for other people, by showing love towards other people, by being kind, forgiving, compassionate, by staying on the path of higher intention, in other words. That's how you worship God. What Tammy Faye realized in those final moments was that she had spent years being untrue to her spiritual self. She didn't need to have a TV ministry. She just needed to do what she intuitively knew was right, to be kind to others, to help those less fortunate, to show mercy and understanding to those who need it in their darkest hour. And how did she know that? Because when she was in her darkest hour, those people who she'd helped, helped her. They showed love to her. They showed compassion to her. She was afraid to be judged. Because her true self, her true compassionate, loving self, seemed to have been betrayed by her television self, her personality self. And that doesn't work. Only love works. And that's what I learned from Tammy Faye Messner. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter if you want, at Cash Peters. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.